I can recall the concourse, the set of theatres down there. I was in second com, and marketing was a DOS subject. It was kind of one of those little wussy subjects in between accountancy and the big sort of heavy hitting big com subjects. And it was really a DOS. And I kind of strolled into one of the concourse rooms and I sit down, I see some of them there who were in that class actually. And uh, we were anywhere we were waiting and uh, for your typical academic to come in and deliver the all market module. And this kind of handsome, smiling, and he kind of walked at a pace faster than your average academic bounced into the room. And he kind of, you know, older people used to talk about Ada. Every promotional piece needs to grab attention, stimulate interest, create desire, and grab attention. Well, I can guarantee you this fella did it. Uh, he started telling stories about guys like Ben Dunn and Fergal Quinn, and we were riveted. We really, 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 really were. I must say, he had a huge influence in my own life. He got me to take action in terms of marketing. Single-handedly, in conjunction with Jim Moore, the professor of marketing for many years, they literally put marketing on the map in the west of Ireland. They gave it a kudos, they gave it a credibility, but more so than that, they gave people the opportunity to work in marketing and develop it. This city owes Jim Ward and Aiden Daly so much. Now, I was wondering why Aiden is here talking of failure. Well, let's put it into context, yeah? Uh, it was grand anyway. The lectures were absolutely riveting. And it was probably the only subject I attended lectures. Wouldn't that be right, Brady, yeah? And uh, you attended a few of them as well. And uh, it was great. And then the exams came. But the perception was that it was still a doctor to pass, you see. And uh, I remember getting lucky in the marketing paper. Everything went my way. All the four questions came up that I wanted, and I says, way to go, we're, we're away here. And the results came out, Brina will tell you, in the old days yet, there was no emails or texting or any of that crack. We had to go up to the quad to get our results. And we were all hanging around the quad, and I put these results up and typewriting as it was. And I'll never forget it, I expected to get a great honour in marketing. And I get 40 to 44, and I could not believe it. And then I heard howls and crying and shrieking, all of these girls. So many of the class had failed. This new marketing lecturer, uh, he came in with a vengeance, so he did. And to his credit, I think he was properly known as Dr. Death thereafter, so he was. Uh, in fairness to him, he succeeded in putting marketing on the map. He got us back up, up there, and it is hugely regarded in this city and region as a result. Ladies and gentlemen, the adjunct professor of marketing in Delhi. Ladies and gentlemen, good afternoon, and thank you very much for coming. And I think after that introduction, I should go home. But down here. Uh, I'm going to probably put things a little bit, uh, take a different slant to, to Pat. Uh, and uh, just following on what Parik was talking about, there was a friend of mine in UCD who was an undergraduate student with me. And he reckoned if he got 42%, he worked too hard. 40% uh, was the pass. He could be known to another two nights. Could have chatted up some, some, uh, some more ladies. He was extremely successful. But, he was also of the uh, Comedy Con Society. He debated and didn't dead. He played a lot of football. He's now a multimillionaire. He's extremely successful. He became out of the university with what we are supposed to produce in the university, a rounded personality. I worry a little bit about some uh, programs that are far too focused on just one aspect of university life. Pure, pure, pure learning and I worry about students who come into me still and say, they've been chased as I knew it all. I I I left it off my heart and I put it out of my Listen, that's not what I'm looking for. Anything. So um, it's a terribly pejorative term, failure. You're losing. Um, it seems to me that there's a passion in this country for appointed to losers, appointed to failure. I was astonished last week on the unfortunate early death of McLaren, um, an icon of the theatre world. And I heard one programme on RTE on him. And the interviewer kept saying, but did he achieve his potential? Shouldn't he have gone to Hollywood? For feck's sake. 
The man isn't cold in his grave and we're trying to be negative. What a career. What an icon of the theatre world. And yet we have to pick up negativity. It's, it's Isn't Porrick Harrington a non-mitigated thing? <laughs> He's gone to 20th in the world as a man. Porrick, would you ever cop yourself? <laughs> and that young fellow, uh, McElroy, well, geez, yeah, only seventh in the world. No? Not, not first, etc. Uh, and Kildare were desperate, weren't they? Uh, not to mention Kilkenny last Sunday. Disasters of failures. They haven't won for all Ireland and we'll forget about all that. They failed last Sunday. What a fantastic team. What brilliant people have given us such enjoyment over the last 17 years. And, and uh, they failed once. Uh, and Kildare, and a great friend of mine, uh, whom I brought down here to speak about leadership on a couple of occasions, and it was absolutely original stuff, and that was John Larry, who unfortunately again died earlier this year, uh, at, at a very young age. What a footballer. Um, what a person. Never won in all Ireland. Was he a failure? Absolutely not. Uh, no, no question about it. Um, and, uh, you know, what is failure anyway? Uh, a very ambitious student of mine came into me uh, about two years ago, uh, heartbroken. Uh, he had only got 76% in the exam, and he couldn't understand why he hadn't got 90 or 86. Uh, there were other fellows out celebrating for about a week the fact that they got 43. <laughs> <laughs> Put it in perspective, you know, this, this word failure. Uh, and. and uh, you know, uh, I was saying to, to um, Elaine Dively during the week that um, I think that the failure needs to be needs to be put in perspective and we shouldn't be afraid of it. Um, my grandchildren just arrived. I was saying at the session I did on selling today that my grandchildren uh, would, would arrive uh, today and they went home for lunch and they were there. Um, and uh, Anna's beginning to crawl. Uh, and I was watching her and she got up and she fell and she got up and she fell and she got up and she fell. And she got up and she fell. Um, and uh, there's a lovely quotation, um, there's a couple of quotations about failure that, that I like. Um, and uh, one of them is by Confucius, where he said, Our greatest glory is not in never failing, but in, in rising every time we fail. And I was thinking of Confucius when, uh, when, when I saw Anna uh, today at lunchtime. Um, and Churchill, I love Churchill's stuff in general. Success is the ability to go from failure to failure without losing your enthusiasm. <laughs> and you know, in my background, nowhere was that more evident than in selling, where if you took personally being shot down by Ben Don or by uh, uh, Victor, Victor Soto Woolworths or Mike Dowell of, of British Home Stores when you, know, you didn't get the £100,000 order or the £300,000 order, but you came back and you tried again and again and again. That's determination to, to do that. Uh, failure, I was saying to Elaine, and probably a bit of a joke, but nevertheless, at my age, I begin to think about this thing more seriously than I did a while ago. Uh, all life is a failure. In the sense we're going to die. Uh, we can't live for all. Uh, and uh, 